In this video, I'm going to look at making a regional map uh, in QGIS version 3 using natural earth data. So from the natural earth website, I've downloaded a number of data sets and I'm going to pick a theme for a region and start working through um, making a regional map with that data. So I've downloaded, as I said, a variety of data sets here from Natural Earth. The naming convention for Natural Earth data is uh, pretty straightforward. So it always starts with NE underscore for Natural Earth, followed by the resolution that it's expected to be used at. So 10M versus 50M versus 110M. 10M um, is usually going to be more zoomed in, uh, and 110M is less zoomed in. So why don't we take a look at that by comparing, say, the populated places for two of these. And in QGIS, I could either click and drag one that way, or I can click and drag the entire folder, and it will include all of the shapefiles in that file. You'll see right off the bat that the 110M data has less data in it. So if I hide the 10M data, you see which populated places are included. One, the, the 10M includes much more, and that's because it's generally assumed that you're going to be zoomed in a bit more, like around here. Um, so it makes sense to have that density of points. When you're zoomed in this far, um, this data set seems particularly sparse, I would say. Um, so depending on the region you're looking at, it might make sense to have really detailed data. Um, it might not. So that's uh, that's one thing you need to consider when you're um, downloading your data and working with it from Natural Earth. Uh, so I'm going to, I downloaded a bunch of um, ice shelves and glaciated areas data, and I just kind of want to take a look at that. Uh, so we have the Antarctic ice shelf lines here. Um, and you can see also they have the polygons. So if I wanted to fill in the ice shelves versus draw the lines for them, I think I probably want the polygons. Uh, remove the layer, remove those lines. And let's see what else we have ports. Let's check out the ports. Let's check out glaciated areas. That sounds useful. Um, except in this case, it's all of Antarctica, it looks like, is included in the glaciated areas. Um, OK. <clears throat> so um, what I'm going to do is, um, in a previous video, I talk about changing the project projection to match the region you're looking at. I'm going to look at um, I'm going to look at uh, the data from the perspective of Antarctica. So the simplest thing I'm going to do is go to the projections picker and search for Antarctica and see what comes up. Um, helps if you spell it correctly. Okay, so um, polar stereographic, let's try that. Let's apply that and see what happens. Okay. Okay, so I ran into some issues when I changed my projection and I needed to pause the video, um, but Going back to the project projection area, I went with the Antarctic Polar Stereographic Projection because that's going to show Antarctica 
more in the actual shape that it is. You can see that we're kind of looking at the globe from the bottom, from the uh, looking at the south end of the globe. And um, what's interesting once you do something like this is you start to see the better the relationship between South America and Antarctica. You see how much closer it is to South America than anywhere else. So I might, um, I might choose to focus on that for my region. Um, so, so I have kind of picked the, my region of interest here, and then I'll start styling the map. So to begin with, I probably want the ocean to be blue. There are a couple of ways to do this. You could download ocean data, for example, but in my case, I'm going to be fine with just changing the background of the project. You can do that from project, project properties, general, and then change the background color. Um, and for oceans, usually, depending on the map, I want a blue. I want a blue that maybe isn't a, a neon uh, annoying blue, but a lighter blue, a more subdued blue. I might make it a little more gray than that. And that's a fine place to start. Um, usually, uh, I don't want my countries to stand out quite that much. Um, you can see right now they're this orange, orangish uh, yellow. Um, and in QGIS 3, I, I strongly re recommend that you use the layer styling panel when you're styling layers. Um, there's a chance that it's not open by default for you. If it's not, you can easily find it under View, Panels, Layer Stan Styling. And so if it's not checked, check it. And if it is checked, then maybe it's over here, but you're looking at something else. So you need to make sure you find that tab that says Layer Styling. So. Uh, like I said, I usually want my countries to not show up too boldly. Um, so I'll often uh, change the fill to a gray of some sort uh, and go back. Maybe change the outline to make it a little bit less noticeable. Uh, there are a couple of ways you can do that. I'm going to go down the simple fill and you can either change the stroke style to no pen you see that completely removes borders. Um, maybe appropriate, maybe not appropriate. In this case, I do want them to be there. I want them to be a little smaller, perhaps, and perhaps a little, um, I'm just going to type in different numbers until I get something I'm happy with. I might also work with the color itself of the borders to make them stand out a little bit less. I think that's I think that's fine for what we're doing. Um, and then I'll go up to the glaciated areas. Um, in this case, it's all of Antarctica, so it's not telling us much about Antarctica, but it is telling us a little bit here about the southern tip of South America. So I do want to keep it, and I want to pick um, some colors that make sense for glaciers. Uh, so probably like an icy blue. So again, I'll go in and change the fill color. Maybe I want to start with the water color. and then change that. And maybe I'll make to change, try to, maybe I'll try to change the stroke to like a blue, a blue outline. And 
And similarly with the ice shelves, but maybe make those a little wider. You see, um, Q just has a variety of color inputs that you can use, and I, I'll use different ones depending on what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, so it's definitely worth exploring these tabs here, playing around with different options available to you. In this case, I might just remove the stroke entirely, so you can get a feeling for um, for where the ice shelves are um, without the overwhelming addition of a border. I think often when you're adding a stroke to polygons, if they're smaller polygons, they c the stroke can really start to overwhelm the polygon itself. That's often why I will turn them off. Another thing you'll also notice with Antarctica is that the border will create a line here. That's because of the way the projection is moving the data around, and the data um, the data end up ends up looking like this, which isn't the most flattering um, look in QGIS. So you might want to go back and just remove that border in general in situations like this. And I think that's fine. So it looks like, I feel like our country's um, our glaciated areas and the ice shelves, it's looking fine. Um, I do want to play around with the populated places a little bit. Um, I want to figure out the scale that I'm looking at and um, work on the size, probably make them a little smaller so that I can see all of them. This is definitely in a situation where I'll, I will usually remove the the stroke so that I can so that it's not um, overwhelming the points themselves. Depending on how far you're zooming in on your map, if you're coming down to this level, it could make sense to add labels for those. Um, I feel like there are an awful lot even here for labels. But let's just look at how you would turn those on. In the styling area, you would click on this um, this layer tab and select single labels, and then the column in your data that you want to style with. So I'm styling with the name, and you can see um, the names coming through here. It doesn't look too bad actually, and I think this might be a a really useful. Um, feature of this map to be able to see where the populated places are and what they're called. Um, that you have a good deal of um, control over how these labels show up. You can work on the font, the style of the font, the size. You can work on formatting, so you can say always wrap on spaces. Wrap meaning go to the next line. So now we have all of these two word uh, places getting turned into two lines or three lines. Um, and the other big option you should know about here is the placement. So, um, so you might want to work on um, exactly where the uh, the label is positioned with regards to the points. Uh, for example, you might want to specify, like, I always want my labels to be to the bottom right of the point. Depends on your map and the other elements on your map. Um, you will see that sometimes some of these labels are too close together, um, or some of them you want to change for whatever reason. For example, this one is overlapping with some other data, so I might want to manually move it. And there are some buttons up here in QGIS that um, specifically 
deal with labels. And the interesting thing about these is they don't change the data, so they're not going to move your point around, but they will save data on your project in QGIS that keeps track of things like where did I move that label to. So if I go in here and say this one's too close to other data, I can tell um, I can tell uh, QGIS to use the name as a unique ID. Um, I might I don't know if Natural Earth has better um, better unique IDs. Uh, this WF WOF ID might be better. Um, let's use that, and then I will click on a label that I want to move and drag it. So you'll see that this base name moved, and now I have another one that's showing up that was not showing up because it was overlapping with that other label. So that's kind of a nice side effect, I guess, in this case, that I now have both. Um, if I wanted to go ahead and move that one, we might see another one pop up because there is a bit of a cluster of points here. Um, and I think it becomes uh, it becomes difficult to really represent all of your data with labels often. Um, so you might actually want to hide some of them. Uh, there's a show hide labels button here. If I click on that and I say, okay, so if I want to hide this base Presidente Montalva uh, label, maybe it's just too long for my map. I just want to get rid of it. I'm going to zoom in far enough that I can find the feature itself. And I'm going to hold shift and click on the label. And you should see it go away. So the feature is still there, but the label's not showing up anymore. OK. So so say I'm happy with my labels, um, happy with the styles of my um, my points for the populated places. I haven't. OK, so maybe for ports, I want something a little more evocative than just a circle. Um, there are a couple of ways to go about this. The uh, simplest way would be when you're styling the ports. I can go to the symbol layer type and select SVG marker. And that will pull up. Um, SVGs that are built in and are available in QGIS. So for example, there are anchors. In this case, it's so small that it's pretty impossible to see. So if I make that a bit bigger, you'll see the anchors better. Um, you can also, I downloaded an SVG from uh, the Noun project. You can see that um, it's kind of a pirate ship. Um, you can do you can do either of those. You can make your own SVGs, obviously. Um, and the way you find them once you do that is through this same process. You select the SVG marker, and you find the um, location of it. You can browse here and find the image and add it to your style, like so. Um, and it's interesting, for example, that there are no ports specifically listed in Antarctica. Once you're happy with your styles, or as happy as we're going to be with them for now, you can export the map by going uh, to Project and creating a new print layout. I'll have another video that does exactly this with this project, showing you how to export a PDF with a title and legend and data source credits and all of that. So please check that out next.